Big Top is a huge structure, and every time the circus arrives in a new town, it needs putting up in a new location. Speeded up like this, it looks easy, but in reality, it takes hours of hard work. This international troupe rely entirely on simple machines and brute force to turn an open field into a circus arena. It's 8 o'clock in the morning and they have just seven hours to get ready for this afternoon's performance. The first job is to get the tent pegs into position. There's over a hundred to knock into the ground. A hammer is a very simple but useful machine. Next, they need to construct the main frame, which is made of four king poles. A large pin holds each king pole to the ground. Pulleys and ropes are then attached to the top. These help the crew get the four massive poles into their final position. A pulley is another simple machine. Lifting the poles requires a lot of force. Human strength alone is not enough. The workers have to rely on the pulling power of a much more complicated machine. The base of each pole pivots on its pin as the main frame is hoisted into place by a big truck. Next, the support ropes have to be pulled tight. And again, a lot of force is needed, but this lever system makes light work of a difficult job. It's another simple but effective machine. Levers and pulleys help raise the canopy. After the canopy is unfolded, more ropes, more poles and more brute force get it into position. Finally, at midday, the big top is taking shape. Without the help of machines, it would have been an impossible task. The truck could pull with a greater force than the whole troop put together. Think how hard it would be to knock the tent pegs in without a hammer. Tightening the ropes without levers and pulleys would have taken a lot more muscle power. Machines make each job easier. We're surrounded by both simple and complicated machines every day. Some machines do more than just help. They perform jobs that we couldn't do ourselves. Aircraft, space rockets, even a pair of scissors. What machines have you used today? <music> Lifting any object requires a force. To measure that force, you need a force meter. It takes a force of around 90 newtons to lift these cans straight up. Time for our scientific eye investigator to find out just how much easier a machine can make this lifting job. What about a frame that uses a system of pulleys? This time, the cans are placed in a sling. By turning the handle, a rope travels around several pulleys and the weight gradually rises. Turning the handle looks easy, so how much force was needed? Each turn of the handle requires a much smaller force. Instead of 90, it only takes 30 newtons. Another simple machine is a ramp.
This time, the cans are lifted by pulling them up the slope. It needs a force of about 50 newtons instead of 90. What will happen if the angle of the slope is more gentle? Will it require more or less effort? The answer is less. The ancient Egyptians knew that ramps made any lifting job easier. They used ramps to raise heavy weights when building the pyramids. Simple machines all reduce the amount of force you need. This lever system means the strength of just one man can raise the canopy. But look how far his arm has to move. The lever repeatedly moves through quite a distance. But the rope it's pulling only moves a centimetre or two. So although machines make a job easier, it sometimes means you have to spend longer on each task. You don't get something for nothing. These are all levers. They look different, but they have one thing in common, and that's a fixed point called a pivot about which the lever moves. For an oar, the pivot is here. On a wheelbarrow, the pivot is at the centre of the wheel. The object being moved by the lever is called the load. The force applied is called the effort. For a pair of scissors, the pivot is in the middle. The load is the item you're cutting through. The effort is the force applied by your fingers. Even a javelin thrower is an example of a lever. The thrower's shoulder acts as the main pivot. The load is the javelin and the effort is the force applied to throw it. A lever always involves a turning action. Once you start looking, levers are absolutely everywhere. See how many you can spot during Natalie and Damien's day out at the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. There's over 20. Just look for a pivot and a turning action. Everything from the levers in the cab to the signal box and the porter's trolley involves the turning action of a lever. So just how many levers did you spot? The Moscow State Circus acrobats are world famous for their daring acrobatic skills. In their speciality act, one acrobat stands at one end of a springboard, while another prepares to drop from a height onto the opposite end. When the jumper hits the board, the harnessed acrobat is catapulted into the air.
it relies entirely on a simple lever. The pivot is at the centre of the springboard, the point about which the lever turns. The load is the acrobat standing on the board. The effort force is provided by the acrobat jumping from a height. As the effort force pushes down on one end, the load is lifted at the opposite end. As with all levers, there's a turning effect. The effort force landing on the left-hand side of the springboard produces an anti-clockwise turning motion. So, what happens when the effort force is increased from one jumper to two? Increasing the effort force increases the height gained by the acrobat. The turning effect of the lever has increased. You can calculate this turning effect by multiplying the size of the force by its distance from the pivot. The turning effect is equal to the force times the distance. Let's go back to just one acrobat. He weighs 100 kilograms, which means he lands with a force of 1,000 newtons at a distance of one meter from the pivot. The turning effect is 1,000 newtons times one meter, which is 1,000 newton meters. So, what about two acrobats? Their combined weight means they land with a force of 1,500 newtons. This time, the turning effect is 1,500 newtons times one meter, which is 1,500 newton meters. If the pivot was moved further to the right, the force would be acting over a greater distance. How would this change the size of the turning effect? A spanner is a very common lever. It's a handy tool when you want to change a wheel. But with a short spanner, the job is impossible. Take a piece of scaffolding pole and make it into a longer spanner. Apply the force again, and this time the nut begins to turn. The same force is acting over a greater distance, increasing the turning effect. In science, the turning effect of a force about a pivot is known as a moment. A trebuchet is an ancient siege engine used by attacking armies in medieval times to hurl rocks at castles. And yes, it's another lever. The rock to be thrown is in a sling at the end of a long arm. This is the load. A large weight is held in place at the end of a short arm on the other side of the pivot. This will provide the effort force. The pivot is much nearer the effort than the load. The whole thing is held in position by a rope. Release it and the rock flies through the air. How could you make the missile go even further? Sometimes turning forces are difficult to spot. But just because you can't see an obvious turning action, it doesn't mean that turning forces aren't there. There's the force of the wind pushing on the sails which produces one turning effect. 
the force of the crew leaning over produces another turning effect, but in the opposite direction. When these turning effects, or moments, are balanced, the dinghy doesn't tip over. Balancing moments is the key to staying in the race. Michelle and Brett are acrobats from Swamp Circus Theatre. They use their bodies to perform complicated balancing acts. Again, the turning forces aren't obvious. That's because they're concentrating on keeping them under control. It takes a lot of effort. This might look easy, but Brett's working really hard to make sure I don't fall off. See what I mean? Michelle doesn't tip over because Brett's small movements make sure the moments are balanced. It's easier to explain with a more obvious movement. As Michelle moves her body, she creates an anti-clockwise moment, which Brett has to compensate for by pulling with his body weight in the opposite direction. My turning effect... ..balances my turning effect. They're equal in size... ..and opposite in direction. When all forces are balanced, Brett and Michelle stop moving. All these actions involve balancing moments. On a slack wire, Brett's got to try and keep his body weight equal on either side. In this way, the anti-clockwise moment will equal the clockwise moment. So, how did we get that amazing view of Michelle on Brett's head? The camera is mounted on a jib. See what I mean? It's basically a big lever. The turning effect of the camera on the long arm is equal, but opposite, to the turning effect of a much heavier weight on the short arm. The weight counterbalances the camera. Counterbalances are also found in nature. Squirrels and kangaroos are natural acrobats, using their tails as counterbalances to stay upright. So, where's the counterbalance here? 